Hey everybody, welcome back for another cool video. Um, a very cool video here today, uh, talking about uh, what we're working on with Ian Fraser here. Um, a lot of you guys know Ian Fraser is one of the best club fitters in the world um, of TXG Tour Experience Golf, one of my favorite people in the world. So uh, I'm just going to give you guys a brief overview of what we're working on to help him play better golf. And this is actually a very good video for people who struggle with early extending, who struggle with two-way misses, um, being too, sh too flat through the ball because they tilt back to be inside out and they have a two-way miss where it's either a big hook or a big block so this is a really good video for people who may struggle with that so with Ian um, him being so busy uh, like many successful people in the golf industry time is valuable so not much time to work in his own game but we try we try our very best so um, with Ian uh, we're he likes seeing a little bit of a cut because of his hooky misses uh, because his tendency when we, when we first started was for him to slide and tilt back. So when we when I play the swing for you guys, you guys are going to see um, a backswing that, if you guys have seen my channel, uh, something that I don't really like. So not very wide. His right arm is kind of crooked because his right arm is very bent at the top. As you guys can see, uh, club across the line. And from the face-on view... You guys are going to see not much turn. So his swing is very arm driven, arms more arm swing than torso turn. And you guys can see as a result, um, you don't see much of his back at all. Okay, you don't see much of his back. His hips sway a little bit from the target while his upper body tilts down a little bit too much for my liking. So um, with this, he is someone who hits down on it not enough, is too inside out is two toe down as a result because you can see as he comes into the ball he early extends to make it inside out if we were to maintain posture and not um, early extend and to rotate properly he'd probably be very outside in and very steep so being a good player he makes do with it so you can see his butt kind of starts there does okay in the backswing but as he makes his downswing you can see it comes off and early extends quite a bit. Okay, there's not much rotation, as you guys can see. Uh, the impact, his, his hips or his chest is very square to the ball, right arm completely straight at impact, we don't want that. Generally, for uh, good ball strikers, we want that trail arm slightly bent into impact um, so that he can rotate better through the ball so the face control is more predictable. So um, we kind of worked, worked along. I'm not gonna give you the entire journey I'm going to give you kind of what we're working towards as a model for him. Uh, maybe I'll give you guys the entire journey in a future video. But I'm going to show you guys what we're working towards. So this is the model swing here. Um, actually, I'm going to put this on the right. So old video on the left, model swing on the right. It's kind of a drill swing first. I'll show you the one motion after. But you can see I have him set the club earlier with his right wrist um, so that we take the vertical hinge out of play. And then from here, you can see when he turns, his arm structure stays in sync with his torso turn. Club stays pointing more back, more of a laid off look, which I love for him. And then lots of legs. You can see his, right, his leg gaining flex as he turns, way more rotated. And you can actually see he keeps his ass back in the downswing. Because he's able to squat and rotate, um, way more maintained posture into the ball. I know his right arm is, is somewhat straight here. We're just doing a drill, um, but uh, as he goes one motion, he actually does a better job of keeping it uh, slightly bent. So this is kind of the model swing we're looking at, where I'm just going to show you what a normal speed. And with these swings, this swing here was actually zero degrees club path, six degrees down, which is a little bit too much, but we're exaggerating things. And his toe has been level or actually slightly toe up as a result of maintaining posture and rotating better through the ball. So lots of good stuff. With the end, we like to see uh, angle, of, uh, angle of attack be greater than the club path. He wants to see club path pretty neutral and we want to see level lie angle to slightly toe up so we know he's rotating well. So that's, the that's kind of the model swing we're working with. 
and then as we go one motion on the left here, you can see it actually flows very nicely. You can see big difference. Actually, I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the old swing on the right now since we have the new swing on the left. You see what Ian uh, he in the takeaway he kind of picks the club off a little bit, doesn't turn. Right arm bends significantly. Club head is slightly under the hands as it goes back. Very as it goes back a little flat, but he saves it by orbiting his right elbow behind his right rib cage, so it, it already is very bent and then gets across it. Whereas the video on the left, kind of the model swing, hands stay a little bit inside, club kind of slides off the ground a little bit better. Okay, club goes through the hands, goes through the arms, club stays way steeper as the hands stay in front of his chest more. So uh, left arm parallel, you can see his elbow still in line with his uh, right rib cage, whereas the video on the right, uh, the same spot, his hands are actually too deep. He, he got fake depth because he brought his arm structure back, not because he's turning. So you can see here, right elbow on the left, uh, I'm sorry, on the right is already behind his rib cage, and his hands are too deep. Whereas uh, video on the left, uh, which is the model swing, hands are not as deep, elbow still in line with his right rib cage. So we love that, okay? And as we keep going, you can see Ian never crosses the line. Nice structure here. Left wrist flat, right wrist bent, arms in front of his chest, as uh, in front of his rib cage, as opposed to the video on, on the on the right. Elbow gets behind the rib cage, and he really, really nicely transitions into a squat and rotate. You can see him squat his ass back and down as he rotates. Arms stay back at at arm parallel. P six looks great. You can see on the video on the right. His hands actually come out and he casts his big time in the, in the, in the traditional sense where he, let, he, he loses his angles. And now on the video on the left, he actually maintains more leverage, actually increases wrist bend through the right wrist bend, left wrist being flat to bowed, which is what real lag is. So you can see a left arm parallel, the picture is way different. Right heel is already lifting off the ground on the picture on the right, whereas picture on the left, right heel still on the ground, left uh, legs are way more flexed, maintaining posture, hands deeper as you can see, and the club way shallower on the left. So I love all that, which helps him rotate into the ball. You can see at P6, shaft parallel looks completely different, way more in posture on the left, not in posture on the right, chest is still way close to the ball, it's not even close how much better it is on the left. So. You can see, you can see a little pull cut on the left. Great flow, smooth takeaway slides it up and then squats and rotates into it. Great flow. Uh, video on the right, no flow, unfortunately. Not very nice. So um, the video on the right here, and I'll show you the face on view, looks amazing. Nice turn. And you can see as he makes his downswing, well, first of all, you can actually see the back of his back now. As he transitions, you see that arm and hand kind of dropping back, staying behind him as he creates more leverage, creates more lag with the arms trailing his torso turn, club head trailing his hands. That's real lag. And I love that when he squats and rotates, he stays very uh, centered. Not much lateral movement, as you guys can see. Squats and rotates, and then punches up towards the line later, which is what we want. Not much lateral, more vertical and rotational, as some of you guys have seen me talk about in Ilsung's video. Whereas if we watch the old swing, the old face on, you can see at the top. So key checkpoints, his left shoulder tilts down too much towards P2 shaft parallel. Uh, what Ian here doesn't drop down as much. And as he turns to the top, you can see way more turn with the upper body. Lower body stays centered, but the old video on the left, his lower body sways a little bit from the screen and not much turn here. So you can see uh, way more loaded on the right, uh, the video on the left also not so good. And then as a result, you can see a huge lateral movement on the right early to try to shallow things out. You can see arm gets thrown off his chest, not very pretty. Uh, video on the right stays, squats and rotates, very center with not much lateral, creates way more leverage here. As you guys can see at P5, arm parallel, not even close. So 
Love that. And Ian actually brings it into P6 pretty nicely, as you guys can see. Uh, lots of angles retained. That's kind of P5.5. Frame rate not very good, but looks a lot better. Video on the left, as you can see, not even close. So lots of good stuff. Um, in one motion, again, the flow is not even close. Video on the left, old swing, no flow. Video on the right, amazing flow. I love that. So that's kind of the swing we kind of work towards in the lessons now. I'm trying to get him more comfortable with swinging in this range. Um, obviously, we want to swing faster as well, be more efficient. So one of the goals with Ian was to get to 170 boss, which he actually got in a relatively short amount of time. Ian was always kind of a high 150s kind of guy. Um, but now you can see, so I'm going to show you the swing, the drill we did first. Um, so what Ian, as the swing got better, I didn't expect it to look super perfect yet on the driver, but I want it to be very functional in the sense that he can hit uh, better, better ball flight where it actually spins a little bit more, where it hangs in the air a little bit more. Because generally, people who slide and tilt will have very duck hooky ball flight tendencies. So with Ian, we try to get away from that, get more squatty and rotate it with less lateral to combat that. And it actually worked out pretty well. We actually hit 170 ball speed numerous times, getting all the way up to 174, which is great. Um, just trying to get him to be more comfortable in that range. He, so he kind of can live in the 160s now, which is great. Um, if he needs to, he can get up to 170 and above. But as, he, as more time frees up in the near future, we're going to help him try to keep it at 170 and above. But this is kind of the drill we did. So club across the shoulders. You can see a lot of flow here. I have him load the right and then squat and rotate hard. Lower body wins the race before the upper body catches up. You can see super squatty here and rotate. Very athletic. Pushes back up. Big squeeze of the glutes and core. Love that stuff. So you can see... Nice down and up there. You can see him really squeeze the glutes. I love that, okay? So as he brings it into the swing, the intent is to, all, is to just make, try to recreate that um, sequencing. And this was actually 168, I believe. Yeah, 168 with an open face, which is actually pretty good. Um, and then as he brought the driver into play excuse the angle here on the down the line but still pretty good um, you can see not bad not bad of its back swings better you see how much high, you can see how high the ball hangs I think that was a 170 ball speed one on the video on the left here. Yeah, 170.8, so 171, pretty good. Um, same thing on the right, try to 10 out of 10 activation. One thing I really encourage a lot of my clients to do when they swing drivers is go 10 out of 10 on the activation. So you can see, again, another ball flip that kind of hangs nicely, doesn't duck hook, no duck hook tendency. Um, way better in terms of curvature that he's used to seeing. So another 171 there, which is pretty good. Love to see that. And we actually got it all the way up to 174, which is great. So 170.4.3 ball speed at 120 club speed. Love that. Neutral path. I like that a lot. So uh, this is how we, can, we kind of worked on. I'll show you guys his model swing one more time. Uh, model swing iron down the line view. Love the, love the flow. This is the drill swing. Gave more of a laid off look. And then one motion piecing it together looks really nicely. Love that. Love that flow. I love that swing so much. Swing on the right, one motion face on. Love the flow, love the turn, love the movement. What a great looking swing Ian's done right there. And then you saw the driver as well. So really happy to see what Ian's been able to come up with with his limited practice time, um, but obviously he's a very fit guy, good player. Um, he's he's going to be able to own this in the near future and play 
uh, better golf and more fun golf. And at the end of the day, even if you can't recreate um, this exact looking swing just yet, it's still already translating to the on course with with um, better tendencies, with less misses. So it's great to see. So hopefully this video helps some of you guys who struggles with early extending, uh, tilting back, hitting big sweeping hooks or blocks. Um, this will be a great video for you. Just want to share with you guys the hard work Ian's put in and his what in his little spare time that he has. Um, great looking swing, great guy, great channel. Can't say enough nice things about him. So um, hopefully this video helps. Um, if you guys haven't already, check out their channel, Tour Experience Golf. Um, probably the best club channel, uh, best golf club uh, equipment channel on the YouTube space right now, and it's only getting better as they do more and more and more. So. Hope that helps. Any questions, leave in the comments below. And we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching, everybody.